A 28-year-old man is behind bars for setting his tenants home on fire because he was upset with them. At just before 2.15am on Saturday the 23rd of March, authorities responded to a home at 312 South 10th Street in Akron, Pennsylvania in reference to a civil matter. Ronald Frisby, a landlord, became upset with his tenants after they allegedly broke a washer and a dryer machine. Police handled the situation and officers left around 25 minutes later. Officers were called back to the scene at 2.44am to a report of arson. At the scene, police learnt that Ronald used the keypad door lock to enter the premises he rented out to his tenants. He then lit a cardboard box on fire and the residence filled with smoke. A witness extinguished the flames and the box was removed from the house and placed outside. Akron Fire personnel also responded to the scene to confirm the flames were fully out and they aired out the premises. Ronald was arrested and charged with arson, burglary and two counts of reckless endangering another person. He remains held at the Lancaster County Prison with bail set at $75,000. The investigation into the matter continues. A Georgia man has been indicted after travelling to Florida, where he assaulted his ex-girlfriend and killed her dog. On Tuesday the 26th of March 2024, 52-year-old Timothy Crawford was indicted for interstate domestic violence, discharge of a firearm during the commission of a crime, and interstate stalking. In the early morning hours of the 7th of December 2023, Timothy left Atlanta, Georgia and began driving towards his ex-girlfriend's home in Cardin Drive, Odessa, Florida. At around 8pm that evening, Timothy broke into the woman's residence armed with a pistol and a stun gun and waited for her to return home. When she arrived, Timothy punched, kicked and electronically stunned her numerous times while telling her that he was going to kill her and her children. She defended herself with a dumbbell and ultimately escaped the residence. Timothy then shot and killed a Maltese dog before he left the home. A neighbour who heard the woman's screams called 911. Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office deputies took Timothy into custody after he later returned to the home. Inside the house, deputies discovered a 40 caliber pistol on the dining room table and observed blood all over the premises, including in the garage, laundry room, bedroom, and front entry area. The woman sustained severe injuries from the attack, including extensive bruising to her body, face, neck, a fractured left eye socket, nose, hand, a laceration to her head requiring stitches, and stun gun burns. Authorities said that Timothy admitted to breaking into the victim's house, using a taser on her, punching her in the face and killing her dog. Search warrants executed on Timothy's phone revealed that prior to the attack, he searched on his phone do you get the death penalty if you kill a woman. In his truck, officers found an empty 750ml bottle of vodka and a partially empty larger bottle on the roof floor. Investigators said that based on surveillance video, Timothy entered the state of Florida between 7am and 4.49pm. He was supposed to attend a work-related barbecue in Tampa the following day, and had checked into a hotel in nearby Lutz hours before the attack. After the attack, Timothy called his ex-wife and said he attacked the woman. I attacked the woman, he said. I love you and the kids. I'm going to jail. Timothy also admitted to the attack and recorded phone calls to his ex-wife from the Hillsborough County Detention Centre. When she asked how he got inside the woman's home, he said he couldn't talk about it because the call was being recorded. During one of the calls, Timothy told his ex-wife I planned it to a degree. If convicted, Timothy faces between 10 years to life in prison. A one-year-old boy was found deceased in a Scottsdale, Arizona apartment after his parents failed to check on him for at least 16 hours. At just before 6.30pm on Sunday the 24th of March, the parents of the child 25-year-old Braden Pina and 25-year-old Chennai Harris called 911, initially saying that they saw their child the prior night and when they woke up he was dead. Braden told police that he and Chennai set their child down to sleep sometime between 10.30pm on the 23rd of March and 2am the next morning. Braden told investigators that he woke up at around 10am to get breakfast from a nearby Burger King for Chennai and himself and that they both went back to sleep after eating. Braden said that they checked on the boy when they woke up at around 6pm, because it was odd and unusual that he would make no sounds and sleep that long. Based on the times that the parents provided to police, the boy had not been checked on anywhere from 16 to nearly 20 hours. Officers responding to the child's death found the child on his back in the playpen in the couple's bedroom, stating that he showed obvious signs of death, such as stiffness and discoloration, indicating that he had been dead for hours. 
Authorities said the parents likely moved the baby into the playpen. The child also had scabbing on his face and leg. Officers also said the apartment was dirty and disorganised, and it was obvious that the baby hadn't been bathed for some time. The parents told investigators that they did not use any kind of baby monitor or camera to keep a check on the baby. Braden told police that he has a history of drug use and wouldn't say if he had taken drugs recently. The couple said the baby had a medical disorder called hydrocephalus, a neurological disorder caused by an abnormal amount of fluid in the brain, and had been diagnosed when he was born, but added that the boy was not taking medications and had not been sick prior to his death. During questioning, it was noted that Shania tried to stay close to Braden, and when they were separated she yelled at him not to talk to the officers without a lawyer. Authorities said that the Department of Child Safety had previous dealings with the family, but it's unsure how the agency was involved. Shania and Braden were arrested later that night and booked into the Maricopa County Jail. They're both charged with child abuse and neglect charges and are held on $100,000 bonds. The investigation into the matter continues. 27-year-old David Roman is accused of abusing his four-month-old infant girl after the severely injured baby was taken to the hospital. On Wednesday the 13th of March, police were notified that the baby was brought to the Phoenix Children's Hospital in Phoenix, Arizona with skull fractures and brain bleeding. Investigators also said that 22 of the girl's ribs were broken and in different stages of healing. Detectives spoke with the girl's mother at the hospital. He said that David had been watching the child that day. He reportedly called her earlier, saying he stepped on a toy, dropped the baby and accidentally fell on her. She returned home and they took the baby to the hospital. She told police that the girl did not have previous injuries that she was aware of. A nurse at the hospital told David that police and the Arizona Department of Child Safety had been contacted because of the nature of the injuries. He left before officers arrived. Police later spoke with David at his home in the 600 block of East Roosevelt Avenue in Buckeye, Arizona. He told them the same story about holding the baby when he stepped on a toy and fell, making a comment about the girl's mother being better with the children. He then walked officers to the area of the home where he claimed he fell, but there was no sign of any toys nearby. When officers told him that some of the girl's injuries were in different stages of healing, David replied that the baby had also fallen off the bed when he was watching her a few weeks before. He said he didn't tell his girlfriend because he didn't think it was serious. Police confronted David again a few days later, and he told them that the girl had actually fallen three different times while he was watching her. He said that in the first instance, he placed the baby on the bed, and as he was walking out the room, the pit bull dragged her onto the floor. He said he didn't tell her mother because he was afraid she'll make him give up the dog. He also told investigators that the child rolled off the bed in the second incident while he was playing video games, and the third fall led to the hospital visit. However, upon further testing and medical examinations, police determined that the baby's injuries were non-accidental. On Tuesday the 26th of March, David was arrested and booked into the Maricopa County Jail on three counts of child abuse and three counts of endangerment. His bail has been set at $25,000 and conditions prohibit him from residing in the same premises as the victim. The baby is still currently recuperating at the Phoenix Children's Hospital. The investigation into the matter continues.